Welcome back, everybody, to the Attract and Stand Out podcast. I'm your host, Darlene Holly, and I am so excited that you're here. I have with me an amazing guest that you guys are going to love today. I have Miranda Mitchell. She is an experienced energetic alignment coach and a human design specialist who is driven by helping entrepreneurs and professionals step into energetic alignment so they can expand their business by creating more impact, sustainability, and ease. Miranda, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I'm so thrilled to have you here. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule. I know life is busy. We were just talking right before the show. We both have sent our kids back to school yesterday for the very first time in a really, really long time. So I know we're both doing this like back to business lifestyle. So (laughs) I'm glad to have you on the show and um, get a chance to get to know you and enjoy the quiet that we're going to celebrate together today. (laughs) Thank you for that. (laughs) It's been a wild 18 months. So it's, I was weird to say before, I'm like, it's so quiet around the house. I don't even know how to go back to work. I'm used to the distractions. I'm used to kids popping their head in, kids fighting upstairs (laughs) and trying to like work through that. So it's nice to have a little bit of quiet, but Miranda, yeah. tell us a little bit about you. Tell, I know that you live in Florida and I know that you're a mama, but um, how did you start doing your business and how did all this come to flourish in for you? Yeah, thank you uh, for asking me. Yeah, I live in Florida and I'm a mom of three. I have two boys that are older and my younger daughter that keeps me grounded into, she's nine. So it's, I'm doing it all over again for myself. Um, and the way I got into this business is honestly, when I first started having my kids, I was a single mom. And I needed to have more time alone or more time so that I could pick them up from school, do the homework. I couldn't work that like the nine to five job. So I started personal training first. I dove into school. I got my bachelor's in science and all that fun stuff while I was doing that with them. So I had a lot of uh, knowledge on the body, physical body. And I think I needed that in that point because I was raising two boys on my own. I needed to be strong. I needed to be focused, you know, um, As they started growing up, I started to um, move towards a little bit more towards yoga. Um, I felt like there was a person that made this comment that made me realize that I think I'd become a little too hard um, within that journey of having my boys and being strong mama. So I started diving into yoga and becoming more vulnerable and diving into um, opening up more letting myself be, I like to say the messy because emotions started coming up. Um, I was referred to as the ice princess. And that's why I decided to go to yoga because I felt like I was really cold. I had pushed everyone away. I was just focusing on myself and the boys. Um, So when I started diving into yoga and I realized I needed to open myself up to vulnerability and support and all of those things I had only been doing for myself, Um, I really started to let myself become messy for about eight years where I did a lot of the work of internal, um, releasing emotions from when I was a child. I had done, I had a lot of traumatic things happen to me as a child. Um, we lived in Vermont and I was the oldest of six. We lived very poor. We had like no electricity, no water. Honestly, we were very dirty. I feel like. Um, I moved out when I was 14 because I didn't want to be in that environment anymore. I wanted something new, something more. I knew I always wanted more. So I started moving out at 14, drinking, partying. I mean, what is there to do in Vermont? That's all we did. You know, I was being promiscuous. There was a lot of things that happened when I was younger. And I started to release some of those beliefs about myself when I started doing yoga and I started loving myself and accepting myself. So I did a lot of work there. And then after about eight years of that, I stumbled upon coaching um, because I wanted to take my students that I was teaching. I wanted to take them deeper. So I stumbled upon coaching and got certified as a coach. And then I found human design, which was just the bow on the present. Like it just grounded me into everything that I had been doing. And it showed me that I was actually on the right path. And there was a reason that I had had this path. And as soon as I saw that in that tangible chart, 
it was like, oh, thank God. I was not just like telling myself all this. <laughs> this is like, this is what I was here to do. This is what I was here to learn and I'm doing the work. So it helps me release a lot of even deeper beliefs that I had about myself of proving myself to be good enough. Um, and then really step into what I want to do and help people do. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. I know um, my audience knows that I was <clears throat> a young mama as well. And so I can totally um, relate to like that, wanting to show that, like, that you can do this and being strong and almost putting up, I remember as well, putting up some of those barriers. Like I got this, I can do this. Like I don't need anybody's support. I'm a very, um, I'm the first person to help everybody else, but I'm really, I, I've worked on this. I'm better now, but especially in my younger days, I was really, it was really hard for me to ask anybody for help because I wanted to prove that I could do this. I had gotten pregnant young and I was like, you know, I can do this. Like I can make this work. And so I love that you, you mentioned like finding that place where you wanted to find that vulnerability or to become more vulnerable and let more people in and let people maybe see you more for who you are. Mm. Yeah. Well. And it was really, I love that you said that because me being so strong did put up a wall. I was, my relationships were not working. And the reason they weren't working is because I had a wall built up where I was like, you know what, I know this isn't going to last. So when it doesn't, I'll be fine. You know? So I was that type of person where I built up all these walls. I didn't need anyone. I didn't look up to anyone except for myself. I knew if anything needed to be done, I would do it myself. I would not ask anyone. Um, and then when I started going into the more of the vulnerability and actually opening up to support, that is when like my life opened up. That is when like my business opened up because um, in my chart, there's a profile that's two, mine is a two, four. And what that means is the two is you like to hermit away and hide and learn and integrate and practice all the healing stuff, which is so me. But then the four is really about getting opportunities in your life to thrive through connections with others. I was not open to connection with others. I was doing it by myself. And because of that, I was struggling so much. As soon as I started trusting other people and having people support me and love me, everything became a lot easier. Yeah, I love that. Like you, you opened yourself up to it, which is such, such mm -hmm. a hard thing, especially when you go through a lot of life <laughs> and things have happened. And like you said, you built that wall and the fact that you were willing to like notice that and see that you need to be more open and that like that authenticity, that vulnerability. I know they can kind of be buzzwords um, in today's world, especially in the online space. And it's definitely something that I teach in my business. And I know you talk a lot about in your business as well. I think people are becoming more and more open to it. Like they're like, oh, like it's okay to let people see me for who I am. It's okay to show up exactly like I am and not be um, jaded or have that wall up or be afraid to let people see you, but like bringing it back down so that you can really connect in a deeper way and really build those relationships and have like a stronger connection. Yeah, definitely. Authenticity is, it is, it can be used many ways, right? Like even as far as putting yourself out in business, we see everyone doing it a certain way. So we think that's the way that we should be doing it because that's how everyone else is succeeding. But when you tune into who you really are, what really fills you up, what makes you feel fulfilled, you don't do it that way. And that is how you succeed. So it's all about being who you are, not what everyone else is or who they think they are. <laughs> exactly. And we, I think we all do it when we enter the online marketing space or even if brick and mortar businesses, like we see other people, how they're showing up and how they're marketing their business. And we're like, oh, it must be, that must be working for them. So I'm going to try that too. And then when it's not integrity with who we are and it doesn't um, make sense and it feels awkward and weird, then it doesn't show up and it doesn't work for you. It might work for that person amazingly because that's their gift and their style. But for ourselves, we have to really like dig deep and find out like, what, how do I want to show up? How do I want to market my business? What feels natural to me? If you don't love doing something, like, please do not do it. Find a way to do it in a way that feels true to you. And then that's when, I know for myself, that was when my business took off. When I stopped trying to be like everybody else and stopped watching what they were doing and just paid closer attention to who I am and what I wanted to do, that was when I was like, oh, like, this is actually easier. It's like you take the mask off and it gets easier where you're almost like climbing an uphill battle trying to do everything everybody else is doing. And it's exhausting. Right. <laughs> 
Yeah. And you know, the thing is, is we can all feel that resistance. We know when it doesn't feel good. We know when we're fighting against something and if it feels like there's resistance and it feels like it's a struggle, well, then that is not for you. So what really makes you feel good? What makes you light up and putting yourself out there? You know, like with social media for, for me, for instance, I'm a manifesting generator in human design. So in human design, the manifesting generator likes to move fast. We often skip steps. We're not detail oriented. We have the work drive, but we have the manifester like vision. So when we see that vision, we go for it. We don't, and we skip those steps. Now, some of those times we have to go back and redo the steps. It is very frustrating to us because we're so fast, but social posts for me were killing me because I would spend so much time writing those posts because I'm a perfectionist and I'd struggle. And it's just like, oh my gosh, this does not feel good. And then when I found podcasting, that's when it lit up for me because I received this information downloads on a basis of people asking me questions, me responding to people. And then from there, I can create my posts. I don't need to sit there for hours trying to create something when it's so easily received and opened through podcasting and through voice for me. So podcasting is my way to meet people, connect with people and get out there where social posts do not do it for me. <laughs> I feel like you described yourself, but you also were just describing me like to a T because I'm a manifesting generator as well. And I can't get into the weeds. It's so hard if I have to like do all that, all those little teeny steps and do all like the, so, like I stopped doing, I don't even do a ton of social media anymore. About a year and a half ago, um, I was hacked. I, I won't even say that I gave up social media on my own. Well, I was still doing it at the time. And then my accounts got hacked. And I lost all of my Facebook, my Facebook groups, my business page, my personal page, wow. my Instagram, because I had connected those things together. And at first I like panicked when I first lost those, all those accounts, because that's where I was spending a ton of my energy and my time growing my business. And like a week or two into it, like once the panic kind of subsided a little bit, I like was able to, I noticed I could breathe again. And it was, I was like, I was spending all this time and energy doing something that I didn't even like to do. And um, I liked it for nurturing my community. It was a great place like to nurture people that were already in, but I was exhausting for finding clients and for like part of my marketing. And so I didn't have it anymore. So I was like, all right, let's find new ways to do this. And I was able to find ways that made more sense for me. And I was able to start like focusing on SEO and Pinterest marketing and different places where I could just take my podcast or I could take a blog post that I wrote or whatever those things were and share them out in different ways and like actually started attracting my clients even more so than I was when I was having a really hard time struggling to build that. So <laughs> that yeah, like and you, you know, as a manifesting, as a manifesting generator, what's coming up is that was a sign because as a manifesting generator and generators too, we wait for signs in the external world to show up to us to respond to. So that was a sign for you saying, nope, this it is not like, the way to go. It was like a giant door closing and it it did not open back up either. I still, it was June 30th of 2020 that I lost my accounts. And I still, like, I, if I try to log into my old accounts, it still says due to COVID, we're taking longer than expected to, to like review accounts or whatever. And I'm like, at this point, like I, I, I can get into accounts through an incognito Chrome extension on my computer. And like, I set up another one just for like personal use to like connect with family and do a couple work things that I needed to be in there for groups for like masterminds and different things. But I'm like, it's so nice to be like, I can share something if I want to, and I don't even have to share it on social media because that's not where I'm getting my clients anyways. <laughs> right, right. But, yeah, and you can tell your energy too. You get yeah. like, when you talk about that, your energy is much higher, which that vibration is what you attract anyway. So if you have that low energy of trying to push and make things, that's going to attract the low energy. You want high energy, you know? Exactly. I completely agree. And it, it's funny who knows if I would have figured it out maybe shortly without Facebook closing, but I'm so glad like as, as much as it's still kind of sad because I lost a lot of connections. <laughs> um, most of them luckily were on my newsletter list and different things like that anyway. So I stayed in touch with the, with the main people, but I'm like, I'm still ever noticing like, Oh, I'm like, Oh, a high school friend. Um, when I like, uh, when I'm on social media, somebody will pop into my head and I'm like, Oh, I need to reconnect with them. I haven't talked to them in forever. <laughs> so so social media has its purpose, which is 
what it's there for. Like, I like the original idea. Like, let's just stay in touch with like high school people and family and friends and not have to focus on that as like the main forefront for my business. Yeah, I agree. So you, you started doing yoga and fitness stuff and then you transitioned into coaching. What would Mm -hmm. you say has been like the, the, biggest challenge that you've had to overcome kind of is like transitioning and just growing your business and um, really finding your niche in the market space? Well, the biggest challenge really was for me, the expectations of how I should do it. You know, I was listening to everyone else and how to build your business, what you should do, how to be seen, how to be heard. You should be posting this much. You should. So all of those things, they were overwhelming to me. And I felt trapped because I felt like I have to do all these things. Otherwise, I'm not going to get seen and heard. But yet I have no time to even support clients if they come from this. So really, um, that was the biggest struggle is learning that. For me, my energetics and and not doing what everyone else was doing was what I needed to do to shift in my business. And I didn't honestly become aware of that until human design. I mean, I knew it when I was doing yoga because I did feel it. Like I felt I'm being authentic here. I'm just pushing. I'm just trying to get a post out to get people to say something. It's not authentically like who I am. So I knew that, but yet I kept doing it because I thought I had to. When I tuned into my strategy in human design, that's where everything started changing. I stepped back from doing that and I listened to how I felt when I was putting things out. Was I listening to things in the external world showing up to me? Was I initiating things? Because as a manifesting generator, you're not supposed to initiate, you respond. So when I initiate, I can feel that resistance. So it really goes back to trusting and energetic. So as soon as I learned my energetics and trusting that, because it's scary, you know, when you're used to getting out there and putting all those things out there and all of a sudden you're like, oh, I'm going to wait for something to respond to. That's a little scary. But when it starts showing up and it's easy and then you have more clients than you even thought you would have and more time at the same time, like, how does that happen? That's because you're being authentic with your energy and you're aligned. You're trusting the process. Yeah, absolutely. How is it that you found um, human design? It's interesting because I had a coach friend come to me about two years or a year before I decided to dive in. She told me about it. I looked at it and I was like, nah, not for me. That doesn't feel like what I want right now. It wasn't right timing. A year late, a year after I touched base with her because she was still talking about it. And I asked her about it and she told me like who the teacher was. And I said, okay, you know what? I'm not going to dive in because I love to dive in. I love to learn. I'm always about diving deep into things. So I'm going to buy her book and see how things go. So I bought her book. I read her book within a week or two. And I was like, oh, this is something. So then I signed up for level one and level two. And I'm thinking, oh, level one, and level two, that's going to be great. That's all I need. That never happens. So then after I graduated level two, I went to three and four. And because of how I feel, and it gave me uh, so much inspiration, so much insight on some of my own traumas, healing beliefs, and then giving me the opportunity to step out of that and boldly into what I'm here to do. Because in human design, it tells you what energies you are here to put out into the world, what grounds you, what your lessons are. It goes into all of those areas because it does have astrology in it. Um, I was able to confidently step into who I'm supposed to be. Whereas before I always questioned, I always questioned myself and do I know enough? Am I good enough? Is this really true? You know? And when I look at my human design chart, there's a huge In my conscious sun, that's the energy that you're here to put out into the world. It's number 48 for me. The high level of 48 in my conscious sun, what I'm here to give the world is wisdom through my own experiences. That's what I'm here to do. However, in the unbalance is inadequacy. That's where I lived for so long. So it gave me permission to say, you know what? That is not me. I'm here to be wise in my learnings and I'm going to help people do that. So it gave me the confidence to do that. Yeah, I love that. I found human design oh, 
probably like two years ago and I, and I, and I haven't gone through training. I don't, I don't teach human design or anything, but um, a friend of mine was talking about it kind of similar to you. I was like, Oh, well, I don't even know what that is. Like, I don't need to learn another, like I, to, at first I was like, it's another strength, like a, a strength building d d defining thing or a disc or the um, Enneagrams, like all those different tests. I'm like, and I love taking those tests. So at first I was like, no, I'm not going to look at it. It's another distraction. And then finally she got me to take it. And I was like, oh, I'm like, this totally makes sense. Like, I feel like it nailed me. Like it knew exactly, which I feel like all the tests I take, I'm like, oh, how do they even know this about me? <laughs> it's so funny how, when you just take it, you're like, uh-huh. Yep. When you're reading like the little report, you're like, are you in my head? Like, how do you know that I do that? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. With human design, like one of the things that I thought was like so fascinating for me is um, like, I need to put, I need to wait to respond. And I cannot tell you how many times in life I will just like get an idea and I'll run with it. Or someone will ask me something and I'll say yes. And then I always have that, like when it's time to actually show up and do it, I had always like that funny feeling in my stomach, like, oh, like, why did I say yes to this? I should have said no, like this doesn't feel in alignment. I shouldn't have done it. And so now I'm still not hundred percent perfect. I, I won't lie, but I definitely take a second and go, let me sleep on it. Like I need to sleep on this before I make a decision. Mm -hmm. So I try, if anybody sends me an email and asks me questions or invites me to be on the summit or podcast, different things like that. I'm like, let me just sit with it. Let me see if this feels right. And then the next day when I go back, I'm like, I can get that gut response. Like, yes, I should do this. This feels right. Or you know what? say no to that because it's not in alignment with where I'm going and what I'm trying to do with my life so I know that has been super helpful for myself just being like aware of it and seeing it in a different light than I had seen before because before I would have said oh I'm a people pleaser I'm just going to say yes to everybody because that's who I am and then I would always be like I don't want to do it <laughs> and now right. I'm like oh now I need to be a people pleaser it's okay to say yes to people if I slept on it and it feels in alignment and if not then I I can say no and I think before human design, I had learned um, that no is a complete sentence. So that kind of went with like that waiting response. Like, I'm like, I can say no, and I don't even have to explain to anybody why I'm saying no. I'm just saying no, because I'm saying no, like, period. <laughs> right. there, there doesn't have to be a no, but, or, and, or here's why, or that long explanation. So I love how like that piece of human design, like it totally makes sense when like you, you really like look into it and you're like, oh, okay. Like I, I can do that. I can wait for response. I can, um, I'm an, I think I'm an emotional authority. That's not the right word. I was just going to ask you that. <laughs> I'm like, it sounds like if you have, if you're waiting, you're an emotional yeah. authority. <laughs> yeah. So like, I have to wait for that gut check. And I used to stay really stuck in my head. Like I would try to like make smart decisions and not listen to my gut and my heart. And so like part of that human design learning when I would, when I learned the basics a couple of years back, I was like, oh, it, like, I just need to trust my gut, like stop, stop staying stuck in my head and like trying to be like rational about it and like have like a really smart plan about it. I'm like, just listen to your gut. Does it feel good? Do it. Does it yeah. feel bad? Does it feel icky and sleazy and slimy and gross? Yep. Okay. We're not doing that. That's not the right way to go here. Yeah. And that is, I just want to, for the listeners, just to say that is for like manifesting generators and generator types. That is for the waiting respond in the sacral, um, and emotional authority. There is emotional authority with all within the five types. And really what that does mean is you do need to wait a little bit longer if you have an emotional authority, because you have to wait out your emotional wave. Um, but per, for projectors, uh, their strategy is uh, wait for the invitation. So what that means is waiting for someone to show up and ask you to be a part of something or receive emails. Projectors have a really hard time because projectors really need a lot of rest and recovery. And if they don't, they feel really bitter. And what happens is they need a lot of rest to be able to receive those invitations. So if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to make it happen and you're pushing as a projector, you feel bitter, you feel not heard, and you keep pushing, but you're not going to receive those invitations until you back off and rest. And it can be very, very hard for projectors to do that because it takes a lot of rest for you to know or for you to receive those invitations. So it's trusting that process. Um, then the manifestors or the other type, they actually have to inform people because they have, they have a direct consciousness or a direct connection with, 
the divine. So they receive downloads really easy and they have lots of information that can, um, they get inspired. However, they don't always have that workforce energy and they don't, they can't always do all the work. So that's what us generator types do. We do the work. So for manifestors, what happens is a lot of people will like as children, a lot of people squash them down because they have such big ideas and they're not considered normal and they squash them down. So then they end up um, getting angry. So manifestors can get angry. And then there's the reflectors as well. And the reflectors, they that what that means is if you look at your chart, you have all your centers. It means all the centers are white. That means they're open. That means they receive all the information from the external and they're really a mirror of the environment. So if a reflector is not doing well, it's because of something that's going on in their environment. It's very important for them to be in the right place. And their strategy is actually to wait a whole moon cycle. And the reason that is, is because the placement of the moons activates the different gates in the chart and they have to feel through how they're going to experience that decision. So that's just a little bit about the strategies for each one of them. <laughs> I love it. It's, it's so, it's, it's so interesting and like mind blowing sometimes, like when you start to like, look at your children, even, cause I know after I took the test for myself, I started to go, well, hmm, I wonder what my husband is and I wonder what my kids are and started playing with some of their charts and seeing like, okay, this totally makes sense that, um, he's this way and she's this way. <laughs> like it also, it gives you um, the ability to have like a more open communication. I feel like, because you, you can, you can see where the strengths are and why they're acting in certain ways as well. So it, I think it's good too, like, to like, like know your family, know your um, business colleagues. Like if you are working with other people in your business, like figure out what their strengths are. What is their human design? What works for them? What doesn't work as well for them? Do they need to sleep on it? Like I do, like don't expect, right. don't ask somebody a question. Like it's, it's bad for me if somebody's like, I need to know like right now. I'm like, it like, it almost puts like a, a panic up where if, if, people know like, Hey, let, let Darlene think about it for a minute. Like let her feel into it and see what's right. They're going to get a better reflection um, from that. So. Yeah. And also if they also know, you know, let's say they can't wait for a, for an answer from you. If you then give an answer and then later on say, ah, oh, this was the wrong answer. You know, it's, you come from it from a different place. You don't put yourself down. Like I can't choose the right answer. I don't know what's good for me. It's, Oh, you know what? I wasn't able to wait out my strategy this wasn't right. And that's okay. It doesn't mean anything about me because that's where we create those beliefs is when we start getting upset with ourselves because of certain things that we decided or certain beliefs that we created because of our open areas. So yeah. And our beliefs, like those things can come in all different shapes, sizes, angles. <laughs> we tell ourselves all kinds of stories. That's the last thing we need is to give ourselves another um, belief or mindset struggle because I know especially as entrepreneurs like we're I know for myself I'll speak for myself but in a lot of my clients like it's it's a daily thing to make sure we keep our mindset in the right frame of mind and that we're you know not allowing that little um self-doubt to creep in or you know the little devil on our shoulder is like how I always envision it like the little devil over here telling me like nope you're not good enough you're not worthy nope you can't do that and I'm like yeah I can watch me <laughs> yes yeah <laughs> Yeah. And that's another on this side. <laughs> and that's another thing. Also, if you look at your chart where there's open areas, that's usually where most of the beliefs are created because we receive all the energies from other people in that area. So for instance, take the G center, which is identity, love, and direction. For me, I have that open. That was a huge struggle my entire life. Like I would be around different types of people and I would take in their energy because that's where I receive others energy in the open areas. And then I would be totally different around other people. And I start questioning myself, well, who am I? Do I even matter? I don't even have any direction. I keep changing myself. How can anyone love me? I don't even know who I am. So then all of those things started coming up because of all the energies that I was taking in. And then as soon as I realized that that G center is why that was happening. And I saw that I was able to just like, let that go. Like, you know, all of those things I was telling myself, they're not true. It's because of who I was around. It's because I was taking in other people's energy. It's not because I don't know myself. It's not because I didn't love myself. So when you even look at the open areas, you can almost, for me, it was almost instant 
that I could release all of that stuff that I told about myself because of certain experiences in my life. <laughs> You're making me want to, I can't remember what my open areas, areas are. I was, I think I have it on my phone. I used to have like this human design app that would tell me I'm like, what are my open areas? I'm super curious now. While I'm looking this up, um, what, what would you say is like the one thing that you wish you would have known when you first started your business? If you could go back and like talk to like young Miranda, <laughs> what would you say to her about her, your business? There's nothing I would change because I feel like everything happens for a reason. I really do feel that way. And I have always learned from everything that's happened. I've always been aware of that, even though I wasn't sure how I was aware of that. So I wouldn't change it. However, I would just tell her you're on the right path. Like just trust the process. You know, because then that way I would be less hard on myself and I would love myself more. So I think that's what it would have been is just to like, trust the process, love yourself. You're like, you're on the right path. Yeah, I love that. And you're, it's, it's so true because yeah, we could do things differently. Um, life could have taken like totally different, you know, we could have done different directions, done things in different ways for growing the business, different things, but each of those learning, each of those obstacles have become learning opportunities, places where we can learn, we can grow, we can strengthen ourselves. We then have that information and we can share it with other people. We can, you know, some of us have to go through those hard directions on our own. Even if someone says, don't go left, like, and we're like, nope, I'm going left. I know I was for sure that kid, <laughs> my mom would be like, don't do this. And I'm like, well, I'm going to do it anyways. And I feel like, oh yeah, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> I'm like, if you yeah. can't do something, I want to do it even more. <laughs> yeah. But, we talked about, I'd like, I'd like that. <laughs> so I'm always, I always laugh at myself. I'm like, why are you so stubborn? <laughs> But it's just part of who I am, right? It's part of my human design. So I pulled up my my open. So my my head, my is it is it throat like the top two? I don't know if you can see. Head and Ajna, G center and Will center is open. Okay. And okay, head Ajna, G and Will. Yes. So what that means is you do take in lots of ideas and inspiration. So definitely your strategy is important when making decisions in like how you put yourself out there. What ideas are yours? Your Ajna is all about beliefs. So that's like, you're very open-minded, which is, I, I love he open head and Ajna because I feel, I can, I can feel when I'm working with someone that has a definition, it feels really intense and I'm used to airy and I like that feeling. <laughs> I like taking in other people's perspectives and ideas. The G center is all about identity, love, and direction. So you're really here to be wise and love direction and as a coach it is a gift because what you can do is you actually can feel other people's identity and you know them like at a deep level because you take in their identity um the will center as far as it being open there is um there is some conditioning there that can happen where if you want consistency and willpower you don't have it and it's okay. You know, when you get inspired by your strategy, something shows up and for you to respond to, you have the inspiration and idea to go do it and do the work. Great. But just know after that, you need to rest. Yeah. Yes. I'll find something else to finish it up for me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> really good at starting something and getting it going. And then I get, to, like, I get like, Oh, I won't do that anymore. What, what can I do next? And then I'm like, but wait, I need to finish this first. So I'm like, thank goodness for having like that a virtual assistant to help kind of sometimes tie up the loose ends and keep things going. Cause some of the projects I'm like, I just don't have it in me to finish it, but it's yeah. great. It's amazing. That's a good idea. Let's run with it. But <laughs> yeah. And there is business circuitry in there. So I'd have to look to see what gate, but uh, there is the gate of preparation and starting, and then there's the gate of finishing. So if you don't have that gate of finishing, it's nice to know, because then you say, you know what? I started the inspiration and you finish it. And then you don't get down on yourself on how you can't finish things. Yeah. And I think that like having like a virtual team too, like knowing their strengths and like finding somebody who's a finisher versus another starter <laughs> has been important as well. Like making sure like, okay, where, what areas am I really good at? I need to get somebody who has like opposite strengths of me to, in my business too, to support some of those areas so that we can get to the finish line in those. Yeah. And you know, in, as far as what you're talking about, as far as the team, I, I always check my team to make sure I know that we're going to work well together. I, and 
before I make a decision because I have had some instances that it just didn't work. And now that I look at their charts, I see what who they are, I see what energy they have, I'm able to give them what they thrive at, you know, rather than give them what they don't thrive at. So I always do that as far as my team. Um, and I help others do that as well as far as their team, because it it really starts to create ease and everyone then feels like they're important, they're seen, they're heard, they're thriving, you know, and they're a part of something. We're really here to all support one another. All of the five energies have different um, superpowers. And when we come together, that's when the beauty happens. It's not us individually. <laughs> Absolutely. I could not agree more. Miranda, this has been so fun. Um, I would love to dive into a couple of rapid fire questions before we wrap up today. Um, I am super curious. What does the what does success mean to you? Mm, success actually means to me um, having the freedom and time to do what I need to do to make myself happy, and then also helping others do the same. So success for me really is all about helping others step into their impact while I am able to do that in a place that feels peaceful. <laughs> I love that. And who has been the biggest influencer in your life? You could name one person or two if you have to, but like, who's the first person that pops to mind? Uh, it's so funny that you said that because when you mentioned that, I'm like, remember I told you that I didn't look up to anyone, that it was me. I like, I had to do everything. Um, the, I will say, I do love Michael Jackson just because he's always, and I will just put this out there too. Michael Jackson is a, a reflector. He was reflecting his environment. That's like reflectors are 1%. So um, Michael Jackson, and also I love Jonathan Van Ness. I love him. Just, I love people that who are authentic, stepping into who they are and not afraid of what people think of them. And what is your happy spot when Miranda needs to like reset, recharge? Mm -hmm. Where do you like to go? What do you like to do? My happy spot is at the top of a mountain in Vermont. Mm -hmm. That sounds magical. I have never been to Vermont, but it sounds like it might be pretty. <laughs> <It's> beautiful. <laughs> Amazing. And are you Netflix? Are you, are you binge watching anything on Netflix or TV right now? Oh my gosh. What did we just watch? <clears throat> My husband picks the shows because I just don't have time to do that. He likes to do that. So whatever he feels like I'm going to like, we end yeah. up watching. I will say that Schitt's Creek is my favorite and I've watched the entire thing three times. Yeah, I love Schitt's Creek. That was a great one. I watched that like right at the beginning of COVID. I found it and I was like, this is exactly what I needed because I was like laughing in bed because I was watching it on my phone while my husband was sleeping next to me and he kept waking up like, what are you laughing at? I'm like, sorry. <laughs> I'm like, it's so funny. Awesome. <laughs> Awesome. And I know I can't buy you a plane ticket today to send you to travel anywhere in the world, but if I could, where would you go and why? I would go um, to England. And the reason that is, is because I know I have family ties there and I would just love to dive deeper into that. So it's always a place I've wanted to go is England. Yeah. Go and find those roots. Learn mm -hmm. a little bit about the heritage. Yeah. I, um, I'm got some Irish in me and I'm chomping at the bit to go to Ireland so I can go check out some of those areas. <laughs> like the castles. I want to see yeah. the castles. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, I'm sure one of these castles is mine. <laughs> exactly. It's for sure in the family. <laughs> Long lost cousin, <laughs> something. <laughs> yeah, I, I totally agree. Awesome. Miranda, thank you so much for being on the podcast. I know people are going to want to connect with you and learn a little bit more about you. Where should we send them? Yeah, so my website is Miranda dash mitchell.com so you can go right on there um and on there actually there is a button that you can click to get a free chart so um i like to run the ch there's many places you can get free charts i however love to do them because first for accuracy and also i do send a video on your type and strategy with little homework to do so that you can start aligning with your energy right away so um but miranda mitchell.com that's the best place to reach me Awesome. And I know you have a free gift, which I think you just mentioned. So yeah. um, take Miranda up on that offer. Um, she will give you a, a reading and help kind of get you familiar with what your um, human design is and how it's impacting you. And hopefully between um, me sharing some of my um, 
manifesting generator, uh, um, off, what, what was it? Um, authority strategy and authority. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, I can't even think of all the names of it. <laughs> Go to Miranda. Cause she's definitely the, the professional when it comes to your human design, but check her out. Um, Go follow her, connect, um, get your um, your design chart read and see, I'd love to know, like come back and tell us like what was your um, your human design and what it, what ahas did you have as you learned that information. Miranda, thank you so much for being here. It's such an honor to have you on. Thank you. And all right, everybody, that's a wrap. Another episode of the Attract and Stand Out podcast. I will see you next week. Um, Remember, I believe in you. You're allowed to stand out. You're allowed to shine. You're allowed to be you. See you next time. Mm, love that. <laughs>